So in the first case, we'll talk about by default. Um, basically, these are the things which um, a server can see by its environment variables. We'll talk briefly about HTTP cookies because HTTP cookies is just a way of sharing information. Uh, by scripting, so if you are you run Flash or Java, you can find additional information about users. Um, if you include external connections, where external connections is basically an FTP or other type network activity and a web page. You could possibly bypass someone's proxy to actually give them the actual IP address of where you're coming from. And that might um, provide you additional information about the user. Um, the one thing about this section is that we really don't have a lab, so I'm going to encourage you to sort of go along to all the various websites as I'm going through it, uh, because it will just provide you uh, information that you can see directly. Right. Question? Yes. Uh, yes, uh, the, the first part was correct, is that basically by Browsing the web, this is what your browser exposes. Cool? Okay. Um, and these are, and we should also say that this is just with your standard installation web browser as well. This isn't really doing anything special. This really wouldn't qualify as hacking, except for on one slide, which I'll talk about briefly. Uh, but uh, otherwise, it's all good. Um, so um, just by default, uh, the remote server knows what IP address you came from. So that's how you can do the IP geolocation. Web browsers will generally include the user agent, which is basically a string to describe uh, what browser you're using. Um, it, it will probably include the subversion of the browser, so that's nice for people to know in case your browser has exploits. Um, the other thing as well is that it, will, it may include uh, what language you're using. In, in our case, it's returning in English US. So these are all hints as to uh, who's looking at your web page. Um, Um, there is actually, hold on a second. Um, okay, cpan.org is the comprehensive Perl network. So basically, whenever there's a question like this, that, that's the first place I search. Okay. Um, Browser. Hold on. Browser. Oh, hold on. Or HTTP, HTTP browser detect. Um, it will return your country, language, device, device name, and browser properties. Um, will determine if you're using Windows, Firefox, Mac, OS, Unix, or Amiga, or one of the PS3 or PSD browsers. And this is all of the type of devices that you can determine by looking at that. Oh. Now, what you can, now what you can do it on the client side is to basically remove that information. But by removing that information, if someone was expecting that information, that's what looks, makes you look suspicious. So that's just something to keep in mind as well. Uh, and of course, you have the mobile and the robot. So if you're Google or Yahoo, you'll be flagged as Google or Yahoo. And it will also return if you're using any uh, sort of cookies. So uh, in my case, because I had a Google Analytics script, which, I, which I'm not including anymore because I decided to change my privacy policy to say that I'm doing no additional logging other than standard web logs because I figured that as I'm sort of, uh, as I'm putting, putting this on open security training that info, it's probably not a good idea for me to be including that 
just because uh, how it, it, it that's where it goes against the standard web logs that thing. Uh, so, uh, but it would return any type of cookies as well. Um, and the reason why that particular script is important because we're going to be later hiding our location information and uh, we can, we'll be using that as sort of a basis point to look back to see where we are uh, located. So um, HTTP cookies are just stateful or are supposed to allow for stateful web sessions. Um, the issue is, is that it never really did it. It wasn't really implemented correctly. And this has sort of been an ongoing issue forever for allowing you to do stateful web sessions because as soon as you make a web request, the connection closes. Um, so it's sort of a known issue. It's, 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 you're trying to uh, and have a session on a web browser. If there's, it works okay, but because of the fact that browsers that browsers uh, don't have to return, because of the fact that you can empty your cookies at any point, it, it is only stateful to a certain point. Um, the other issue is, is that um, cookies are supposed to be only set from the website you're visiting, but unfortunately, as you can include images on remote servers, the images on remote servers can also include cookies to gather profile information about you as well. Um, or profile, profile information in this case is setting a cookie for that particular site and then checking it later in the future. So uh, the example of where this happens is at one point I went to Hobby King, uh, which is a hobbyist website uh, because I was interested in building a boat. And for the next month or two after that, whenever I went to any web page that included Google Ads, it would say, hey, go to Hobby King. Hey, go to Hobby King. Hey, go to Hobby King. So it's just something to be aware of, but that, that's basically how they're doing that. Not in this particular case because it's Google, because Google has a longer history um, because I basically, whenever I, I'm using Google Mail, and as I'm using Google Mail, I'll be presented with Hobby King ads. But if I was completely signed out of Google, I wasn't actually logged into any of their services, in theory, that should go away. Now, we'll be talking later about the other types of cookies that make it harder, but uh, because Cookies isn't a per perfect mechanism, so people are trying to create ways of storing information in your browser in different locations that aren't the same way. So you have flash cookies, which is basically a customized flash script to store <coughs> up to one meg of information in your web browser. Uh, it's sort of a session identifier that you have to go to this one particular page to empty. So that's not easy. Um, there are also other cookie, there's other cookie type implementation tags for particular web browsers that people can do. And this is all on the web page called, which is called uh, um, EverCookie, which we'll be talking about in a little bit. Sound good so far? Okay, so now we'll be talking about by scripting. This is the fun part. We can see how we can know if we're coming from MITRE or not. Um, we'll be talking about have you ever visited any of these other sites before? Uh, JavaScript, which technically speaking is a little bit of hacking, which, which web browsers have disabled. But there's other ways of doing it as well, so we'll be talking about that in a little bit. Um, there's a JavaScript location API, which is to say where we are, which is goes to your cell phone question earlier. Um, we'll be talking about click heap, which is basically how you can record where people are clicking on a website, which you can use to build up user profile information. 
It's also sort of a way that web, uh, what's the word, web authors are using to see where people are clicking on the web page to make it more user friendly. So each of these have their good and bad points. Um, and also evercookie.js, which is a Schiebel JavaScript thing, which basically shows the hundred of different ways that people can put tracking information into your web browser. So as we are a moving topic, or as this security, web, web security is a moving target This used to work. It's not working currently. Uh, but basically, uh, Firefox and other browsers uh, have fixed uh, this. Basically, uh, a particular website was using JavaScript code to check the CSS color of the href link for a bunch of websites that, that they were wondering about. If you've ever been, been to these other type of web browser, these websites before. And if it's the light blue, that means that you haven't been there. If it's the dark blue, they have been, you have been there. And that was a way that they could build a profile of the type of um, activity that people were, um, web websites that, that were not, uh, that were not immediately accessible to, to, to that particular website, not requested through that. That's correct. Um, now, if you Google this exploit, um, they basically said that they disabled this particular um, cascading style sheet element from working. There might be other casca cascading style sheet elements that may still work. So that's something to keep in mind as well, if this is something you care about. Um, I haven't tried that, but it should work. Um, the location, JavaScript location API is pretty cool. Um, Basically, what you're doing is, is your web browser is sending, is looking at the surrounding Wi-Fi access points. And, it has, and Google has a database of Wi-Fi access points and, lo and uh, locations. And, if, and, and depending on what access points you see, it will turn the location base, based on based on a summary of that information. So, okay. hmm. um, you do have to click to allow um, when the, the JavaScript location the API is called to to share their information back to the web browser. Uh, but once you allow that, it returns a reasonably accurate location of where you are. And we are in Bedford, but, but we're not quite. I don't think we're actually there. We're mm -hmm. yeah, it's a little bit more where we are. What, what, the, there was a couple of open source databases or open source activities that people use the first time to create this database. Um, and then Google came out with the Android phone. And by default, your Google Android device will return to Google in order to improve Google services. Um, your, uh, GPS location and surrounding Wi-Fi network. If you, uh, by default, I believe, with Android device, Android devices. So that's how that works. Um, at, at least that's. I'll, I'll throw in the caveat that that's how I understood it worked the last time that that that, that I looked into it. Um, we do have. There was this thing a couple of years ago, or like a year ago, where the Google got in trouble because their vans were driving around and they were actually doing packet capture. Yes. 
Yeah, when, when, when Google was driving around, they were doing packet capture in Europe, and that was illegal. Yeah. And they were probably doing something like that in the US, too. Um, and again, on the next slide, it talks about how Google does it according to Firefox. Where Firefox gathers the information of the nearby access points, sends it to Google Location Services, and then Google Location Services returns an estimated location of your location. Um, of course, if you do not consent, Google, the, 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 you, you won't send your location over, over the wire, but um, if you do consent, then yeah, any website that requests that API will know approximately where you are. And yeah, that is, is a freaky feature of Google or a freaky feature of HTML5. You know, on the plus side, like it will like if you're trying to use a metro application and you're wondering where the nearest metro station is, that's a cool feature to have. But by the same token, it, it, it can be scary as well. So that's something definitely to be aware of. Um, the next slide also says that, that Google is not trying to identify you or your location. Um, uh, but yeah, that's coming directly off of Google's website, which explains what they're trying to do there. Um, the sample JavaScript locations code is incredibly easy. Um, basically, if navigator.geolocation exists, navigator.geolocation get current position, and then we, we're calling the, the, the JavaScript function show map. Show map is accepting a position which has a coordinates that latitude and a coordinates that longitude, which you can do whatever you want with it. Um, so yeah, it's it's very interesting. Um, and again, here's the sample. When, that's the latitude and longitude, which is returned by the API, which is the green, which is the um, A right here. The green arrow is where I actually was, so it's very accurate. Okay, uh, so yeah, there there is that m bit of magic there to actually make that work. Uh, the location is returned in the WGS84 standard. If you care about mapping uh, in the correct, uh, in the in the correct standard, uh, it can be off by a large distance. I have been geolocated, or not geolocated, but, but using this technique, I have been located to Baltimore instead of in Arlington. It sort of depends on how many Wi-Fi locations are actually near you. And um, particularly when you're somewhere remote where there's only one or two Wi-Fi access points, it might be off by a large distance. Um, so that's the other caveat that I would offer right here. Um, um, ClickHeat is a JavaScript API that basically, uh, where, when you click on a web browser, it will send a one by one image request to the server, basically saying where you clicked. Um, and you can then do these nice little heat maps of where a lot of users uh, click. That's basically you can use uh, you can do user profile creation with that type of information. Um, Evercookie.js is sort of evil. It uses HTML5 features of the standard database of databases, uh, session settings, uh, long-term session settings. Uh, it uses Flash, JavaScript, and other techniques as well to basically store a cookie. Um, and it can't be easily revoked. There used to be a Firefox plugin called Never Cookie, which used to work until Firefox was upgraded. Um, so it's, um, 
It, it, it's, it's a known issue. Uh, basically, the way that you can uh, defeat the ever cookie would be to uninstall, reinstall your, your browser. Uh, because unfortunately, that's really the only way you can actually be sure to remove everything that the browser has about you. Um, so, we'll go to this web page now, uh, sammy.pl slash evercookie. Um, so these are all the various ways that's trying to set a cookie, HTTP cookies, long-term shared objects, which are flash cookies, Silverlight isolated storage, which because we're using Internet Explorer, we have access to Silverlight, and Silverlight has their own ways of storing cookies. Uh, there's cookies in web history. You can store cookies as e-tags. E-tags are an extended tag of some sort that allows for storing of information. Uh, they're storing in the web cache. You can store in the windows.name, which is a JavaScript. Each window has a name, and then you can do some sort of weird storing to make that work. I'm not going to claim to know how all these things work. I'm just saying that it exists. Once you create an Ever cookie, and it works, you'll say all, all the places that try to store the cookie. In some cases, um, because Aaron Explorer is on a modern browser, it doesn't support global storage. Um, but it does store local data, cookie data, user data. And so now if we go to settings, if we go to settings, edit view, favorite tools, internet options, Privacy, player sites, and hit refresh. And we rediscover the cookies. It is still there. So it's, it deleted one, but yeah, I'm not really sure. It's, it's a little bit of a funky web page, but it's, Yes. I mean, it, it really depends on how paranoid you want to be. Uh, so it's, in, in some cases, you really want to be paranoid, and if you want to, but there's other times where you actually want this feature because you want Amazon to recognize you, you want your bank to recognize you. Um, I mean, this is the type of stuff that Housecom is using to, because, uh, to, Basically, they, they set, I think it's a long-term session object, but I'm not 100% sure, to um, make sure that you registered with the external device before you can access your account with the, pro, with the profile. Um, so, I mean, there are good cases for this. It's just you also have to, it's, it's also something that in cases where you don't want this to be stored, you have to be really careful. So it's just something to be aware of. Not easily, no. Um, there, for some for some ways, you can manually go through and delete stuff. So, for instance, long-term session objects are stored uh, in one particular place, which you have to go to Adobe's flash site, which shows you all the different places where, uh, where the long-term term session objects are used. But that doesn't include all the other 15 or so techniques. And the only thing that you can really do is clear the web browser. Or you might be able to get away with rebooting sometimes. But again, it's depending on how paranoid you want to be, it's, it, that's a that's that's definitely something to be aware of. Um, 
And, and actually, because of the fact that we're using the student profile on the MITRE Institute, we actually probably have a bunch of long-term shared objects. Uh, objects, I'm guessing, if you're logged in as student, because I'm sure a bunch of people have tried to go to various sites. But that's what I'm guessing. I'm not sure how often these machines are reinstalled. Um, so yeah, it's. If you really want to make sure that you remove all the cookies and try to uninstall various browsers, but because that may not always work, you can always uh, reinstall the OS. Um, on the plus side, um, uh, if you were to have a um, browser inside a virtual machine or possibly the EC2 cloud, um, that might be one way of uh, doing this type of type of stuff because you can just recreate the Amazon instance sort of as you need it. Uh, or you know, can sort of start from a known good place. Um, external connections are another way that people can use to possibly identify you uh, when you browse to a website. Um, if you use uh, HTTP, HTTP is one that everyone's familiar with, but, but your web browser can also browse FTP shares. You can browse Microsoft shares. It can browse, it, it can possibly browse LDAP, but that's not 100% sure at this point. It can possibly browse Gopher, but that sort of depends on, that sort of depends on the browser at this point. So, so if your browser supports these other external pro external protocols other than HTTP and they're not going through the web proxy that MITRE provides or the web proxy that you're using you know, at another location could possibly, possibly be exposing your actual location that way. Um, does that make sense? Okay. And of course, the cool thing here is that it may not be visibly apparent, like it is on on the right here, that you're making a re request with another by another protocol. In this case, we're requesting an image of size zero of length of height zero of the method message of the day for the site prechill.org, um, which is just a Reachout.org is, is basically a community bulletin board site, so it's, um, we'll be talking about that uh, in the next section of the course, but that's a site where I have my personal website. Um, see also a couple of different websites here. Uh, Metasploit is a decloaking uh, Engine, which is old, but it gives another couple of techniques that you could use to possibly bypass browsers' settings. Um, Info by IP does IP geolocation. It lists your various plugins you have, but it also provides who is paying in trace routes and DNS lookups. So that's another good tool to use. Okay. Um, Sounds good. Cool. Uh, so, see also uh, waxy.org 2011 Google Analytics, which is a way that Google Analytics can be used to trace back user information that posts stuff uh, anonymously. Um, so, that's basically um, because you're getting a cookie from Google and Google knows a lot about you, you could potentially know who's posting stuff to your website. So if someone is, so that's something to be aware of. Um, uh, DRES Lite is an excellent um, uh, module that, I'm sorry, source code that basically does the panoplic um, attributes and converts it into a browser key, uh, which basically is sort of like a session identifier that uh, uniquely identifies that browser. It doesn't really handle the 
how your browser changes over time, but it's a good start. Um, and that's publicly released. It's, it's very cool. Um, and these techniques are common and they're not going away. Basically, they're very profitable. Um, and if it's profitable, it's not going away. Um, and this image is taken from an online, uh, from a Wall Street Journal article. And uh, where it's trying to assign a device token to your particular browser. Now, with all the web patches that occur over time, they're going to have to, that your particular session ID would somehow have to magically evolve over time. But, but that's probably possible. Um, okay, so at this point, we're going to have, I'm guessing maybe a 10 minute break or so again. Um, when we get back, we'll start with a wave of dealing with Tor and that type of stuff. Um, but yeah, this is the, this was a portion of the course that we used to identify people in browsers.